Hi, it's Lael from Me by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Now, today I'm going to be doing something quite interesting. I found this piece at a house clearance sale and what drew me to it was the Formica top. Now, it's not vintage Formica, it's more mid-century modern, quite retro, so, uh, but I just really like the check. So, it was filthy, it had been covered in a tap and it was outside, so it's all been completely bleached, cleaned inside and out, but there's quite a lot of marks and things, so I am going to have to paint inside the cupboards. And what I'm going to show you today is two different sort of kind of techniques. One of them, um, I'm going to show you how to make a sort of, well, in Scotland we'd say sort of tartan, but I think in America you maybe see plaid or check or... So we're going to do a sort of check um, sort of surround and then blend it out. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take all of my bits and pieces from my IOD transfers, which... These are all pieces and parts. There is just little pieces in all of this stack. These are not new transfers. There's a couple of retired ones, but you can use whatever you want, whatever you have left over. And we are gonna create a really unique design on the front of this. I'm gonna take the hardware off before I start. Now, I'm just gonna talk quickly about colors and then I'm gonna give it all its base coat because you don't wanna see that. It's just me base coating it. I'm going to be using a mix. Uh, on the front, I'm going to be using Annie Sloan's Old Ochre, which is a sort of off-white. And it'll be covered, two coats with in the front and that. And the sides, it's going to be um, Givenchy, which is this sort of bluey colour with a little bit of the old white in mixed into it to try and recreate this sort of bluish colour here that's in the Formica. Um, I'm unclear whether I'm completely changing the handles, but I think what I'll do is, at the end is, I'll probably just um, spray these a different colour. Keep them and spray them because they are retro, they go with the look. So I'm going to get on two coats of old ochre on the front and the mix of old ochre and Givenchy on the sides. I'll paint inside the cupboards and I'll paint inside the drawers and then we'll get on with the design. So everything's thoroughly dried um, because we're going to be putting... Uh, mask and tape on the piece. Now, we're going to be doing a check pattern. We're going to, I'm just going to do it all over, but I will be um, kind of distressing this area back in because there's a couple of bits here that really could have done with another coat, but these, I can catch those later on, so I'm not too worried about that. So, um, I've got three, this is my first coat, so this is my lightest coat, and then how I'm going to apply my paint next is I've mixed up um a little bit of the blue which is this original blue and some more uh, old ochre some of this with just a tiny little bit of the old ochre and i've mixed up a gray now the reason why i've mixed up a gray is there's a gray stripe in the formica and i'm trying to make this match with the front so that's what i'm going to do so what you do first is you get your masking tape. Whoops, you try not to rip it. And what you do is you start applying it in stripes down your front of so this way first. So I'm going to go across the whole piece. And apply this I'm going down over the hinges here and we'll make sure we burnish this tape in good and proper at the time but make sure that it's straight the hinges are gonna kind of throw it a little bit off that's not straight so that's one now the second piece you use as a a way to Space it out so you don't need to push this one down hard you're just using this this one and you can use this same piece of tape again and again this is just your spacer so you're putting that one there so that you can add this one here and I'm just going to work my way across this piece 
using my middle piece of tape as a spacer so that I've got the stripes. Whoops, stuck to the tape there. So that I've got the stripes all the way along. So this is my spacer again. And I'm putting this one in here. It might actually help if I put my glasses on. Um, so this is my spacer. And we're lining this up here. Just it'll keep it reasonably straight. And then we're going to do the next one. So what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to go on and do this until I've done the whole piece and then I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so my tape's on, all my vertical lines using my spacer um, and I've burnished down all the edges so it's smooth. I'm using an artist sponge and I'm just going to offload it onto the side and I'm going, I'm doing, it was a cross between which one was my lightest colour, whether it was this or this, because you go up in shades, but I've decided I'm going to put this one on first, then the grey. And then you just, now I'm going to have a very worn look on this piece, so um, I'm not too worried about, you know, any sort of texture or anything, it'll all become apparent once I've done it. And I'm just going to go on now and I'm just going to take, paint with the makeup sponge with the artist sponge in between um all these t t uh, stripey um tape lines and then we'll get onto the the lines going this way so i'm just going to go and do that just now i'm i wanting quite a bit of texture in it so that's why i'm kind of doing what i'm doing with the sponge um and i have to make sure where my doors and things open that that you know like down these little creases that they've been done but again, adding texture into my stripes. So I'll just get on and do that now. So we've done our vertical, now we're going to do our horizontal. So it's the same, exact same process. So you're putting one on um, and I'm going to use this top one I think as my spacer. Like that, so not too hard down. And then you're just doing, oh, I tried to prep in advance but it's kind of stuck together. Then all you're going to do is do exactly the same thing as you did with the horizontal with the vertical just stick them on and make sure that it's straight and then take your take your spacer off I think it's running slightly off there I'm just gonna fix that a bit now spacer on again like that and I'm just going to repeat the process all the way down to the bottom again. Okay, so my vertical stripes have been done. We've put our horizontal tape on using our spacer so that they're equal. And I've burnished it down to make sure that I get a kind of tidy edge. And now I'm going to use the next sort of slightly darker. Now, as I said, there wasn't much between this and this one. But because there's grey up in the Formica, this is what I'm choosing to do. And then we'll put our dark on last. So I'm just going to do across the way now, over the top of the stripes I've already done. And I'm just going to work my way over the whole piece doing in between all the stripes now. Okay, this is dry again and we've just painted in between our vertical stripes. Now this time round we do not take the tape off. These, the, the um, horizontal stripes stay where they are, you don't take those off. And then what you do is you start again with your vertical. And so exactly where you started before, it's really actually quite simple. You just put your stripe on again. 
and this is the one that kind of runs slightly off because of the hinges and make sure that's down and then you need your spacer and this is our spacer as I said this one you have to kind of keep an eye on because of the hinges you don't want it running off and then you put your true one that you're keeping on and once we've done this we'll be going over with our darkest colour take your spacer off seal that down put your spacer back on and all I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did before I'm just going to work my way along putting a piece of tape on using my other piece of tape as a spacer pulling it off and putting my other piece on so I'll just go on and do that okay so that's our stripes all put downwards and now what we're going to do is our darkest colour last and we are just going to go all over it with this all over it so I'll keep on going and I'll go all over it and um, we'll see what it looks like when we do the reveal. Okay, so it's all been painted over with the darkest colour. Now, I tend to not let it dry completely, completely before I take off the tape, only because I think sometimes that gives you a, a sort of uneven edge. Now, there might be some bits that I've kind of like, there's been a little bit of, um, you know, it's popped under the tape, but this is going to be all sanded and distressed this check so I'm not bothered so you start just by removing your down your down stripes first um, and as I said they're, they're not they're not completely dry they're just slightly damp now um, so we we'll whip these off one below I'd probably do be a little bit more patient than what I'm doing so that's the the vertical now we're going to do the horizontal These ones here are a little bit wonky, um, must have been the way they put the tape on. Now, I'm going to let this dry completely. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this. I think because it's got slightly out of line, I'll probably just hand paint it in just to straighten. I don't know, it's this, these two rows here, but everything else is perfect. And we're going to be taking away this middle area, but that's how you do a check. Okay, so there's a few multiple little boo-boos on the check. But as I said right from the very beginning, I actually only want this part round here. Um, because I'm going to be putting all the detail here. So we're going to be sanding and distressing it back. So I'm really not that bothered. Um, just remember, don't do what I do. Make sure your tape's lined up every time. Because if not, you've got the kind of slight off. But I'm happy with what I've got. Now the next thing what I'm going to do is um, using the original colour, which is the old ochre, which is the creamy white. I'm going to start kind of getting rid of this area here because this is where we're going to be putting our transfers. Now because we're looking for a sort of um, kind of like distressed, um, I want some of it to totally go and some of it not to go. So. Um, this is just, you know, kind of like how, giving us like a big blank space. So probably what we'll do, we'll just fast forward this part while I kind of get to a place where, um, you know, we can move on to step two. But this is all I'm doing. I'm just blending out a space, you know, giving it that distressed look and then we'll do some sanding. 
Okay, so I've given this the first coat to make it look like, you know, this bit's worn off. Um, I'm going to have to go over with a second coat. I don't want it all completely to disappear. I want that sort of distressed look underneath, but a little bit of it I want to go back over. While this is drying, I'm just going to sand down all of the high spots and kind of distress all this check that's left over. The only reason I put the check in the first place was just to try and kind of team it in with the Formica on the top. But I don't want it overpowering the whole thing. So, And I had to do the whole thing to get the check. So I'm just kind of working backwards. It was like a bit like a sledgehammer to crack a nut, you know. I had to do all this to get this far. So um, I'm just going to sand it and then... I'm going to just touch up the bits I'm not happy with there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal, seal this area here with lacquer, let it dry, and then we'll meet again and we'll start putting our leftover transfers and kind of put a design on it. Okay, so we've set the scene. We've got a really distressed canvas that we can layer things on. Um, I decided to leave as much distress as I could. I've sanded it back. I've taken it right down to the wood in some areas. Um, I've discoloured some areas. It's it's what I would call heavily distressed, but it's going to be gorgeous. So all the pieces and parts of IOD transfers, everybody has loads of little leftover pieces. And because I do furniture, I tend to have, I don't use a whole set. You know, when I do this, I you know, use pieces and parts. Sometimes I use the majority and there's only maybe a few things left over. So I'm going to piece together a design just out of my head using all these pieces and parts here. I might not use all of them, just use some of them. I've got quite a lot of different things. So just what I think is going to work. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some typography on it just to kind of give it, you know, some interest. So I think I'm going to do something like this and this. Um, in the beginning. So I'm going to start with the word market and this has this came from the label ephemera. This is this is from the label ephemera um, transfer. Now I want it to kind of span my cupboard doors as well which is going to be a pain. Actually do you know what I think I'm just going to bring that down only because uh, Martin does that look straight? Kind of trying to fit the fraction. Both sides. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But there. So, um, this is a retired one, this transfer. So, like all transfers, kind of work a minute just to kind of get the majority of it kind of stuck together, stuck onto your piece, and then you can start working away at it. So um, I've sealed this piece with um, uh, lacquer so that my transfers go on okay. And um, I think we can probably fast forward me doing this piece um, until we've got the next piece on. Okay, so we've got market on. I'm going to put the birds up above the market because I have a wee strip of the birds left. This here slipped. It went a bit um, ski whiff. It's not my day, I don't think. So what I did was I wanted it really distressed. I've just sanded it back and we'll work with this. To be honest with you, I'm not quite sure what it says anyway, so I don't really want it to be the main focus. We're going to be putting things round about it. So I'm okay with this. So the next, I'm just going through the pieces and parts. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the birds up here. So I think when it's this kind of project and you're using up pieces of transfers, you really don't know how it's going to go, but I just kind of tend to have a look at the negative and positive spaces, maybe put some words in, set the scene for your transfers, you know, do things behind it like your check, your distress. And I'm also going to put some stenciling around this too to kind of um, emulate this sort of design. So, you know, you've got to build it all up. It, it doesn't just, it always starts looking awful and you build and you build and you build and you build. But it's a great way of getting used to, to use up all your little bits and parts. So I'll crack on and I'll put the buds up here and then we'll see what we're going to put on next. Okay, I have a couple of pieces of the wallflower transfer, which is my absolute favourite. It is my most favourite transfer. And I'm trying to work out my sort of design and I always think you know something up here and something down there or there or there works well so I'm just trying to figure out how I can sort of cut this and I think what I'll probably do is I think I'll probably cut the the yellow and the green leaves out of this one and piece these three and and maybe 
some sunflowers from the um, painterly um, florals but I've also got some pink ones from Wander so I can pad this section out to pretty much make it this sort of size so it's just about being brave thinking about positioning now I do have lots of leaves in the painterly florals I want to try and keep this red piece on because I think it gives it some interest so I'm just gonna cut it like that and round the and take away the leaves because I do want even if it's just one of these leaves no I'll take these two leaves and I'll leave the I'll leave the third one there and do this and I think I'll go round here like this and I think what I might do Take that one off of there. I think what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this um, and make this look like a leaf on here. And when I put these together, I think I'm going to try and do something like this so it makes it look kind of like a flower. Um, so is this going up here or is it going down here? I think we'll start here because we're needing it to detract from this kind of messy part here. So. Um, so I'm going to go on and I'm going to put these ones on next. So I'm just going to add as I go some more pieces and parts. This is from the Bro Brocant um, transfers, I think, this little flower. So I'm just going to add it sort of here. And just think about your positive and your negative spaces. You know, how you want it to sit, how you want it to look. Um, you know, the, the finish um the finish how is it going to look is it going to look unbalanced because sometimes you know when you put things together it can look like a little bit unbalanced so you know just make sure you do that so i'm just going to go and i'm going to just put more parts on just now and uh, we'll see where we go with this Okay, so I've got everything down that I wanted and I've used multiple scraps from different um, IOD um, transfers. So the birds and the bees came from the brocant. I think that little flower came from the brocant. The uh, butterflies, the frog, the bird, they came from the entomology. The lettering came from the label ephemera. Uh, the label ephemera and the entomology are retired. Then I used painterly flower, florals, sunflowers and that rose. Wallflower was cut up between here and over here. This piece of is from Wanda. And I think I've named all of them. That's what I've used today. Um, we put the check and we set the scene with the background and we distressed it back the only thing i'm playing a wee bit is is this this is a little bit tiny bit squint but i think it kind of goes with the overall look so you know as a piece i'm happy i am going to sand and distress maybe some of this blue because now this is so heavily distressed this blue is very perfect so i might actually just wash some i think what i might do is because i've already sealed this i sealed this when i sealed here i think what i'll do is i'll maybe run some white wax 
along there I think that might work and now what I'm going to do is because I've got this sort of pattern here I have a stencil that I'm just going to put down both sides just to kind of tie in the black it's as if it kind of finishes it off on both sides and it's not just in the middle so I've got some Annie Sloan Athenian black I've got a stencil brush and I normally just offload into my lid so I'm just going to get some paint not too much uh, when you're stenciling you really should offload as much as you can and I'm going this way with the straight edge facing in um, now some people would tape it on but I'm not gonna um, I'm just gonna just gonna go for it and I'm using a sort of swirly motion with my um, with my stencil you know round in a circle some people use makeup sponges I mean I have used makeup sponges and done tutorials where I've used makeup sponges but I always go back to a stencil brush I don't know why I just prefer it so um, now it's going to get a bit tricky for me down here because I'm going to butt up against the hinge so I'm going to try and do this side bit first I need a little bit more paint offload it I'm going to do the side round the hinge first try and bend it and kind of get it in there like that I think the problem with these cuts of things is you just have to kind of bend it and make it work it's going to look a little bit weird around that hinge right now I'm just going to come and I'm going to do the same repeat pattern but that hinge is in the way I really wanted to kind of start there again but I won't I'll bring it down actually because I don't want it um, button up against the hinge so let's just check I'm getting it kind of in the right position as the last one and if you can hear that kind of moany groany noise that's our old Labrador in his bed snoring um, so round and round in a circle don't shift your stencil Make sure you've got a firm hold of it at all times. Not too much paint. That's the secret to um, doing stenciling. Just small amounts of paint. And you'll find that you don't very often get bleed through and you get a nice tidy crisp. Oh, not if you go underneath it like that. But you normally get a nice crisp edge. <laughs> I spoke too soon. There we go. And that's that one and we're probably only going to get a half a one here uh, just down to the bottom and we've got the hinge again so we'll we'll try and make the best of it the best we can with this that hinge is that hinge is annoying a um, little bit more paint on my stencil brush offload it uh, make sure it's kind of straight with that curl above and off we go again and round let's try not to make too big a mess of it around this hinge because it really is kind of like in the most annoying place try and push it down with my hands like that so i'm just going to go on and uh do this and I'm going to do the other side and then really we're on to hardware and um, uh, sealing it so that's for just now and I'll just go ahead and do the other bit okay nearly completed now um, what I'm doing now is I've got the finest of fine it's uh let me just put my glasses on 800 um, sandpaper it's the finest of fine um, just enough to you want your transfers to look like it's part of your piece and all I'm doing is I'm just bedding them down in it gives them that kind of worn look it makes them look like they're part and that's where they've always been as opposed to something that's been stuck on it 
and I'm just going to do my little frog down here. He ended up down on that because I lost his back in and so I just stuck him on. And that sunflower there, just, you know, just a light, just, just to kind of like, just bed it in a little bit. That's all you need. You don't have to go crazy. And uh, I've done everywhere else. And this, the stenciling, I'm going to use a slightly, um, well, it's, a, it's not even a slightly, it's a much rougher piece of sandpaper. And because this just looks a little bit too shiny and it's a little bit texturized. So I'm just going to knock that back a bit. Just now and then. Don't worry about the dust, it'll come off. It's just got a bit messy there around the hinge, so I just want to kind of get rid of that. And all that does is it just knocks it back a little bit. Um, it's not in as in your face. Bit around the bottom and this bit up here. Just put some texture in it, and there we have it. Now. I'm just going to um, white wax the sides and this bottom part and then I'll change the hardware and we'll go and get some glamour shots of it. So we're finished, everything's done. So this wasn't completely, co this wasn't complicated at all. It was just putting on a simple plaid pattern. I know mine was slightly wonky, but I knew I was going to be going and distressing it. And the whole piece is literally made up from pieces and parts of IOD transfers. Some of, um, you know, I've, I've already listed what they all are, but all the just the little bits sanded to give it that age feel. The front has had two coats of lacquer to seal in the transfers. The side and the bottom trim have had white wax. Everything been cleaned uh, the cupboards and everything have been painted uh, inside the drawers have been done and there's I've put some decals on the side of the drawers and I'll give you the glamour shots of that in a minute so um, I've been well for me by Marley if you've enjoyed this video then please consider subscribing and like it share it if there's something that you want to know how to do when it regards furniture and you're looking for a special technique just let me know and I'll see what I can do and I'll see you again soon. Thanks.